The next feature though, so the next request that might come across uh, across your desk is, okay, we want to change the current customer um, file doesn't have a gender. I want to uh, make a change and I want to set up a new project to add the gender field. This can typically be very hard in other platforms to do. So what we can do in Snowflake is actually create these dev and tests using this feature called zero copy clone. So a zero copy clone effectively clones can clone an entire database, a table or a schema, but it doesn't move the data behind the scenes. It copies all the metadata. So you can have as many of these dev environments as you want and pay no extra for storage. So I'll do the first one using the UI just to show you how simple it is. So our retail data warehouse, uh, we can clone that using the UI and we're gonna call this dev project one click finish. So what Snowflake doing behind the scenes is actually copying all the metadata and creating a fully functioning separate database called Dev Project One. If we jump in there, it looks exactly the same, but it did it instantly. So in those 10 seconds, we've got an entire new dev environment for people to use. And it's not costing us any money because there's no different data stored within it. When we change that data, you'll see that there the may be some additional costs as you change data, but the initial dev environment costs you zero dollars to set up and, and takes a very short period of time. So uh, let's create four other projects want to run at the same time and they want to clone that, that production environment. So let's run all those as well. So again, they'll probably take about five seconds each, but we're creating effectively now we're going to have 50 billion rows of data that can be accessed by all these different environments and by different project teams. So you can create as many of these dev or UAT environments as you like. So the idea is you may have one for UAT, you may have one for dev, you may have one for test. But you can create as many of these as you want and it's a very quick process to do. So we've created now five separate databases so you can see We've got our retail dev two, three, four, five. Now our retail dev one um, was created in a different permission, so let's create that one as well. So if we do a quick select star from the customer dimension in our dev environment got three, three million records, just to ensure that that's exactly the same. Our production environment has 3.6 million records as well. So we've got a dev environment, project one, and a de and our production environment, which hasn't been altered yet. Now, project one is our customer gender project. So the client supplied a new file, uh, and they're adding a gender field within that file. So we're going to do a dev project to test loading that data in, and then we're going to switch it over to production. So we're going to use that new dev environment that we just created. We're going to use our dev compute cluster as well. And we're going to create um, a new table called staging.customerdim. And this has that new column, which is gender. Now, just to be sure that the new file is there and ready to load, we're going to refer to that same stage, but we're going to go to the dev folder within it. OK, now my scheme is wrong, so I'm just going to change to the staging schema, which is where I created that stage try that again. Okay, so you can see the custom agenda file that the client supplied me to do development and testing uh, exists within there. So let's now copy that into the customer dim within the dev environment. So uh, one of the things we want to check though is because it's a clone, there's probably going to be data in there uh, from our previous I actually know there's not because I did a create a replace. So that create a replace has effectively dropped the table. So it's an empty table now, but it's got a gender column in it. So let's copy that data in with that new field. So this is going to load 3.6 million using our dev virtual warehouse into our new customer dim dimension. Now that's only altered the that's the staging table. Now our DWH customer dim table is still the same, but what we're going to do is we're going to alter that table and we're going to add a column. We're going to add the gender column to that table. So that's a metadata operation, so that's very quick. What we might now do though is update that DWH table, that the curation layers table, to encapsulate the new gender information. So I'm going to update my customer dim. I'm going to set the gender to be the gender of the new staging data, updating it where customer key equals customer key. 
The other way we could do is a truncate insert, um, but we're going to do an update on this. Now, this is all happening within the dev environment. So you can see here, it's my dev environment. So production is not changing. So because I created that zero copy clone, production is still exactly the same. It's now writing out new records to my dev environment there. So let's take a quick look at the difference between our retail um, production environment and our retail dev environment. We grab a single customer record there, Jeanette. No gender because this is our prod environment. If we look at that new one which I just updated, it's the same table, DWH custom div. We can now see the gender field, the female gender field has been added. So all we've just updated 3 million records in our dev environment and now we could do our testing, make sure it all looks okay, make sure everyone got updated. After we do those checks and we make sure that everyone um, has been updated, we can switch it over to production. So let's do one more query just to check uh, the gender and account star to see how many we have. Just to see that we don't have a large set of nulls or anything like that. Miss the line. So we do have a number of unknowns, but that's what happened in the data. There is one null, so the new customer file was probably missing one record from it. Um, but we do have a pretty even spread of males versus females as well. So we've loaded all that data and updated an existing set of customers. So we've decided that's all okay. What we can also do now is actually back up our prod environment and switch this dev environment to production if you want to do that. There's plenty of ways we could promote that to production. We could just um, change the customer table and rename the, the table itself, but we're going to do a full database rename. So we're going to rename our product, production database to a backup just in case anything goes wrong, so we don't lose it. And then we're going to do a quick alter of the dev environment and rename that to global. Now if we run a select from our customer production table, um, I've called it global DW, my mistake, didn't test these scripts before, I'm going to call it retail DW, let's just rename that, and do a select. You can now see that the gender field is in the production database, but we've also got our backup system there. If for whatever reason we wanted to restore, we could keep that for a period of time. Uh, and you can still query that backup if you want to have a look, and we could join between the two to see the changes if those questions come up later. So as you can imagine, very powerful in terms of how many dev and test environments you can create. So that's pretty much it, and that's just an example of one of the cool features in Snowflake. Uh, there will be some other sessions around JSON, semi-structured data, which is another unique point, um, and a bit more detail around our caching in later sessions. But if there are any questions, please feel free to contact myself or the Snowflake team, and you can start your journey on Google and Snowflake. Thank you.